G'day. I guess you're wondering from the title what on earth chocolate has to do with mathematics and in particular this product, Milo. Now I'm not exactly the model to be presenting this but I can't look at this product without thinking of a particular mathematician and by the time I'm finished I hope that you too will make this association and enjoy it. It's a little bit of a roundabout thing. I'm going to share a few reasons why I like Milo. First of all, my mum was born the year this was made. This was first on the market. Uh, a, an Australian chemist working for Nestle uh, was very concerned, I suppose the company was concerned, but he was concerned that children in Australia were not getting sufficient nutrition during the Great Depression after World War I. And uh, in the early 1930s, he invented this product for Nestle. And uh, in 1934, during the uh, Royal Easter show in Sydney, this was presented to the public. Now, it didn't come in a tin like this in those days. But I want to share with you what, why Thomas Main and Nestle called it Milo. It was, a, it was originally a fortified uh, drink. This brand new tin I purchased this afternoon says it's made from malted barley, but it's rich in protein and has lots of minerals and vitamins, it says. It also has quite a quantity of sugar, but still a very popular product. It was named Milo after a classical figure, not a mythical one, a real person called Milo. Uh, now we call this Milo, but probably the original character pronounced his name Milone or Milo. And uh, he is probably the strongest historical Greek figure that we know of. An extraordinary character. He grew up in a Greek colony called Crotona in the instep of Italy. Uh, there are a lot of Greek colonies across the bottom of Italy at that time, about Oh, the mid 500s BC, or, or um, let's say 520 BC. He was extraordinarily strong and became a wrestler. And at this stage, the original, not in the modern, but the original Olympic Games were still being held, uh, as long as along with a, a variety of others, the Pythian Games and the uh, well, there are a number of them. Let's let's just leave it at that. But he competed in the original Olympic Games in, among other things, wrestling. And holds the extraordinary record of having won six successive Olympic wreaths, if you like. They didn't have gold medals back then. For the open wrestling, he was undefeated for six uh, Olympiads. Uh, started as a teenager and finished when he was in his around 40 or early 40s and uh, was only eventually defeated on his seventh attempt by a young person who managed to stay out of his reach and tire him out a bit. Uh, an extraordinarily strong man. And the story is that Milo, when he was in training, got a young uh, heifer, a young cow if you like, and did squats with it on his back. And as the, the heifer grew, he obviously he was lifting heavier and heavier weights and got stronger and stronger. And uh, consequently, the picture of Milo carrying a young heifer or a young bullock is a, is a very um, uh, common illustration of him. There is a now I remember reading as a child that there was a a story that he actually arrived at one of the Olympic events and walked into the stadium or the arena with a, a young bullock on his shoulders to intimidate the opposition. Uh, it would seem to fit with what we know of his character. Extraordinarily uh, strong man. So, what's the connection? Well, I'm going to show you why I'm excited because today uh, I managed to purchase an original tin or an early tin of Milo. Now, it doesn't have the Milo in it, of course, but I've been trying to obtain one of these for many, many, many years. And finally, I was able to purchase one from uh, 
Duncan and Tony, those kind gentlemen that run Grandpa's Shed in Fitzroy Falls in the Southern Highlands near Sydney. You see, if you ever want a little treasure trove and go looking at some old things, go to Fitzroy Falls and look up those two gentlemen, uh, Duncan and Tony, and you'll find all sorts of things. But this is what I found. This is an original Milo tin. Uh, Nestle's fortified tonic food, and it's got all sorts of instructions about how it's good for kids and how to mix it up. And there on the front of it uh, is a picture of Milo carrying a young heifer or a bullock for strength. It even has the word strength on the bottom of this pedestal here. There you go. I think of, when I think of Milo, I think of this character Milo. Now, how is it connected to mathematics? Well, you might be surprised to find that Milo was one of Pythagoras' students. Remember Pythagoras' theorem? A squared plus B squared is C squared, or the square on uh, the sum of the squares on the two short sides of a right angle triangle is the same as the square on the hypotenuse. Pythagoras was a friend of this man, or this man was a friend of Pythagoras. And uh, there are even le stories or legends, if you like, that Milo saved Pythagoras' life at some point. There's even a bit of a legend that he married one of Pythagoras' daughters or a, or a woman that was one of his followers or something. But uh, almost certainly knew each other, and they met when Pythagoras arrived in Croton or Crotona in southern Italy, to set up his society, and Milo was one of his students. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Pythagoras that will give you some idea of how it ties in with this man, Milo, and, and the product, well, I won't quite go as far as the product, Milo. Pythagoras was an extraordinary figure, quite apart from his mathematics. There's even some doubt that he proved what we claim he proved. It was possibly one of his students and possibly, well, life gets confusing back 500 odd BC. But Pythagoras was, uh, his dad was a jeweller. Uh, the story is that he made jewellery or cut precious stones and so on and travelled around the Mediterranean selling his wares and uh, travelled with his wife and uh, when Pythagoras was born, his son Pythagoras. Pythagoras was actually born on the island of Samos, uh, which was a Greek island just not very far off the coast of Turkey. And uh, I'll try and put a map up on the screen for you to see that. But the story is that Pythagoras, when he was a young man, 17, 18 years of age, left Samos and travelled. And uh, the story is that he travelled to Egypt and probably to, uh, to Babylon to study under wise men. The stories he studied with the priesthood in Egypt and the stories he studied with the Magi in Babylon. Now what makes it interesting is that the Egyptians already knew Pythagoras' theorem. The Babylonians certainly knew Pythagoras' theorem as well. We have that on clay tablets. The Chinese knew it before Pythagoras knew it. Um, it's possible that Pythagoras was the first to prove it geometrically. But what's also interesting is that this time in history is an incredible period. Now, we, we don't know the exact dates for a lot of people's births and deaths and when they did their things, but at the same time as Pythagoras lived, or within, a, say, a century either way, we had Confucius uh, over in China, uh, or Kung Ji, uh, Kung Fu Ji. Uh, I don't know that I pronounce my Chinese quite so well, but uh, Master Kong, Confucius was um, 
living almost certainly at exactly the same time as Pythagoras. Uh, Lao Tzu, the, the originator of Taoism, also was possibly living around the same time. Uh, moving back across to India, Gautama Buddha, almost certainly around the same time. Moving a bit closer across to the Mediterranean, uh, in Iran, we had Zoroaster, again, probably around the same time. There's, there's dispute over the, the, um, the timing. Uh, it, it seemed that in all these cultures around the world, about five or 600 BC, there was this upsurge of philosophy and religion and, and understanding of life. And Pythagoras was part of it, he imbibed that. He was, uh, if he did go to, to Babylon, he would have been there during the last decades of the uh, Jewish exile, the exile of, of um, uh, the Jews in Babylon before their return. And uh, so it's possible that he knew of those biblical characters, you know, Daniel and Esther and Shadrach, Meshach, Abed, Abednego and, and the like. So it's, it's an extraordinary time. And Pythagoras learned, obviously learned of this theorem, either in Egypt or Babylon or both, and uh, also imbibed a lot of philosophy and a lot of political understanding, a lot of understanding of music and arts and science of the time. Came back apparently to Samos, quite a learned gentleman, and, and um, at the age of 40 odd, around 530 BC, left Samos and moved across to the colonies in southern Italy, the Greek colonies there, and a colony called Croton or Crotona in particular. And there he uh, started speaking and sharing his ideas with the community and eventually a society or a brotherhood uh, developed there. And uh, interestingly, the, the, there were kind of different levels in the Brotherhood. The ones who were really close, who really wanted to know and learn, called Mathematicoi. Uh, mathematics doesn't mean numbers. Um, in Greek, arithmos means number. Uh, it just means learning. People who learn. Mathematics was the art of learning, and Mathematicoi were those who learned. And the second category, if you like, were those who weren't sort of in on the inner secrets and the inner, the inner discussions, but they hung on the fringes and and heard stuff and because of that what they were called akus math akus no aku akus math mathematical i think gee i'd have to look that up again but uh because they were hearers and we get our word um we oh dear no i don't want to go there um acoustics and things like that from akus uh for hearing but Look, the, it's, it's rich pickings here, and I encourage you to go exploring, learn about. I'm delighted with this. I'm going to be sharing this with various students that I tutor. Learn about Milo, learn about Pythagoras, learn about that era in which they lived, uh, all the discoveries being made, the adventures being undertaken. Learn about the original Olympics. Uh, you'll be staggered to read about this bloke and some of the stories they've told. But I just couldn't help but share the story of Milo or Milo and Pythagoras and how I can't look at this product without thinking of those men and that aspect of mathematics. Uh, wonderful, wonderful time. I thank you for watching. If you are not a subscriber and would like to learn more, then by all means subscribe. And uh, if you've liked what you've seen, please leave a comment and please like the video. Thank you very much for watching.